I'm going to talk about this Italian architect who some of you may know, Ferdinando Sanfelice, 1675-1748. And this is a very, I'm going to take this off, I think, um, two meters away, just about. Um, uh, it's a very signi significant period of um, uh, Naples' uh, development and growth. You can't talk about San Felice without talking about Naples. Um, but this, uh, I suppose, the thing just to say at the outset is this is not, um, this is not uh, uh, a kind of uh, historical talk. Um, this is really uh, um, a talk about design. And um, a few years ago, I'm sure some of you went to the Venice Biennale uh, when Rem Koolhaas set the theme fundamentals. And one of the subsections of this really caught my imagination. Uh, it was about elements, the elements of architecture, windows, doors, roofs, stairs. And the stair section for me, I found very fascinating. Um, uh, if you can not fully see the screen there, there's some more seats here. But uh, um, So uh, really, this talk is uh, going to show you some of the work of um, San Felice, but it's, it's also about the element of the staircase, and I'm going to, at the end of it, show you some of, um, some of the work that we have been doing recently around the subject of the stair that's been really inspired by this really truly great designer um, and, and so that's why I wanted to call it uh, Theatre of the Stair. The other thing I just really wanted to say is uh, I'm very indebted to Dirk de Meyer who produced this amazing book. Some of you might have it. It's a study of uh, the staircases of um, San Felice uh, and his followers and colleagues in Naples um, throughout the 17th century. Um, his students, I think, together with students in Naples, did a lot of analysis and studies, drawings, beautiful drawings, some of which I will show. Um, impossible things to draw, but are very carefully captured. So, um, so I want to, uh, so here he is, he was a, a wealthy aristocrat um, from this period. Naples, as some of you might know, underwent uh, great transformations at this time. It was um, occupied by the Spanish, um, and then in about 1710, I think, um, the Austrians came in and took it over, and they liberated the city, which was locked into the city walls. Um, oops, I'm going to come back to that. Uh, it couldn't grow, so it grew as a very dense city, incredibly intense. And when the Austrians came, they liberated this. They said, no, we're going to let the city expand. The, uh, the social structures of the city changed from being uh, a city of uh, grand, large palaces to, uh, let's say, um, you could say, uh, condominiums or the, the sort of idea of the apartment building with um, where palazzos were transformed from one whole building into multi-occupation building. That's where the staircase comes in with San Felice. But just before um, talking about San Felice and Naples, I want to just go to Rome um, uh, 200 years earlier, at the height of the Renaissance. I'm sure you all know the Palazzo Farnese, uh, a rather grand house for the Farnese family. Um, and this is very interesting to just consider um, classical architecture at this time before it morphed into the Baroque, um, where, you know, you see in this, uh, in this facade a, a absolute symmetry, repetition, order, uh, and you see in the plan of this building uh, the way in which staircases are held within the plan and not allowed to somehow break the facades in a way. And there, the staircases are not, um, do you want to come and sit here? You might see better. Yes, okay, it's free. Um, this, so, so, you know, we see in, in this uh, great palace 
uh, four staircases um, that, are, that are not celebrated in the facade of the building. For classical, I think Alberti really was the one who said, uh, I can't remember the exact phrase, you know, he described the stair as being a sort of inconvenience in the plan, as somehow a, a kind of problem to deal with. Um, it somehow had to, had to be contained and consumed within the facade. So the, the, the problem of the stair being about the, uh, say, the diagonal direction uh, uh, rising horizontally and vertically, um, not in, in a way kind of expressed. Well, you know, if we can go back to Naples, all of this uh, was turned on its head as the Baroque uh, as Baroque architecture, Neapolitan Baroque architecture particularly, um, developed into this kind of extraordinary um, free language of construction. So here we are, um, 1775. So at this point, Naples has really become pretty much the third city of, of Europe, one of the principal cities up with London and Paris as a place that, you know, uh, was attracting lots of investment. Uh, intellectuals, artists were descending on the city and uh, the city was growing and the typology of this new kind of apartment building was evolving. You see in this a zoom in map from the same period, the incredible um, repeating arrangement of uh, you know, what is essentially uh, a courtyard building here and a garden behind, the palazzo building right on the narrow street, opening up into these, these beautiful voids in the fabric of the city. And, and this was uh, the predominant typology that grew beyond the city walls at this time. And San Felice was uh, one of the, uh, you could say, um, principal architects who really got, a, got, a, got his head around this and um, started to take the, uh, let's say, the grand palace across a four stories, four story volume and turn it into, um, uh, turn it into um, a series of uh, wealthy apartment buildings. So they were often conversions, that's the other thing to say. So I'm going to begin by just showing you uh, a project that is called Palazzo San Felice. He himself developed and designed this building. Um, he bought the plot and he uh, proceeded to uh, develop um, two, two, uh, two parts to it. So here is the original uh, palazzo with three wings like this. Um, and typically, as you saw from the map earlier, the palazzo would be on a narrow street like this, so you could hardly really, there wasn't much opportunity in the facade of the palazzo to kind of exert a kind of uh, um, idea of composition. You could barely see the facade, only from a kind of acute angle. Um, but it was the making of the staircase behind uh, the main facade of the building is, is where uh, these architects really came into full force. And the staircase, so I'm, I'm going to talk with it. Palazzo San Felice is, is essentially two courtyards um, that made one, uh, let's say, condominium apartment building uh, where the staircase becomes the circulation device to make it work. Because prior to this point, it would have had just a single stair that would have taken you up to the Piano Noble, so the first floor, or actually the second floor in Naples, because the city was so dense, they regarded the second floor as the grand floor, the Piano Noble. And um, beyond that, the other stories of the building will be accessed by small staircases. So what happens here is, uh, let me just start with this one. So here is a plan uh, of this uh, project. And when he gets his hands on this project, these two staircases here and this little one here don't exist. So the courtyards are open to the landscape beyond. And the, as I say, the first, second floor is accessed from one stair that historically would have been down here. But then a grand conversion takes place, typically, of these buildings. So um, I'm going to show you two, two projects. Uh, it's one project, but two staircases. First, we begin with this one and then this one. Um, um, there's a... Um, 
a description given to the types of stairs in Naples um, when these conversions take place, snails and hawk wings. And when, as the stair is um, stretching between the two wings of a courtyard, uh, we see something very, spe but enormously long, 16 meters. We don't need 16 meters for a stair, but he likes to use the 16 meters to crisscross the courtyard and bring access to the, the, uh, the wings of the, the, the palace. Um, and then the other type of stair is, is uh, described um, uh, uh, Balabeo, who wrote a very famous article in the AA files in the 70s, described them as snails, or snails and hawkwings, and you'll hear that phrase come up uh, uh, this evening. So um, San Felice, he has these two ideas going, and, he, and these two ideas he plays out many times in his career from here on in different forms. I'm going to show a few examples of his staircases that play out like this. And they are the most extraordinary pieces of design. And that's what I wanted to really emphasize, that this talk is really about design, not so much about the history of Naples or the history of a group of architects. So here is the first of these stairs. I mean, what he does first of all is he positions the staircase on the axes of the existing entrance into the courtyard. And you're met with this um, strange kind of echo of the entrance uh, as seen from the street. So this is the view in this photograph from the street through the courtyard to this um, very unusual, um, strange looking um, uh, 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 stair which uh, morphs into two stairs in fact. <clears throat> so the cross section you're looking at on the right of the screen here is, is the view from the street looking up at the stair. The stair, uh, uh, you should say th this stair, unlike the other one that I will we'll talk about, um, takes you up to the second floor and it feeds just two apartments in fact. Um, the stairs, the way they, 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 kind of, they kind of flow down together, they meet together like, like a kind of lava as they arrive in the courtyard. And here's a view. Um, these uh, stairs are used a lot in films from the 60s. This is one. Um, the, the thing I want to say about these um, and how they're interesting to me in a contemporary way is that they hold a very strong sense of um, uh, communal, social uh, sense of uh, togetherness um, between, an, be, between the distribution of dwellings within uh, a building. You could describe it. Um, so perhaps, I don't know if there's a plan coming up. No, I'm going to come back to that. Um, this is a step. I'm just going to go back one, two, three to this plan. So what you get here is one stair that splits into two stairs and then coils up to the entrance of the apartment, one story above here. This is a, a kind of maid's apartment here. Uh, two stairs that then come together in a kind of joining. And I find this very fascinating in the way that you might uh, exit your apartment and in a way you have a dedicated stair, stair, but the stairs can join in the half landing. It doesn't come up in that drawing, but they can join in a half landing seen in this image here. You see how here is the apartment door and the stair coming down and it's photographed from the other apartment door. The two stairs coming together at this uh, point in the kind of mid landing point. Again, just to um, say these are drawings by Dirk de Meyer's students from Ghent. Um, and they're, uh, in, in our unit, we talk a lot about drawing, the importance of drawing and capturing an idea. And I think this is a fantastic cross-section drawing in the way that it captures this idea of two things, door to apartments here, coming together, coming apart again, and then if you were to move the section forward, would arrive down in that lava of uh, steps as they descend <coughs> onto the street. And just look at the way, you know, both staircases have these cu cupolas here that then come together in this middle 
portion. So there's a sort of individuality and collectivity in one mouthful. And um, I mentioned earlier that the Austrians had taken over Naples at this point, and it's, it's a speculation that perhaps the castle of Graz was with it's also a very famous uh, double helix staircase, um, which really is the same idea uh, where you have these two stairs coming up to two different parts of the castle, kind of coming together on the half landing and then moving away to access doors and then coming together. And this idea of um, circulation, two spirals, each belonging to sets of dwellings that then come together and then come apart and come together and come apart. For, for find this very interesting way of using design to, um, let's say, you know, uh, um, uh, speak about a, a uh, collectivity and individuality in a piece of spatial architecture. And I mean, it's, uh, it's the model of the Austrian Castle of Graz example, but it's, you can see very clearly what it is as a plan. Uh, two spiral staircases mushed together. <clears throat> so, um, so leaving uh, um, the snail example uh, of um, uh, Palazzo San Felice here is always very refreshing to me in Italy how they're not precious about these things. They remain very functional and usable um, uh, artifacts. And, and I, I forgot to point out that in the section as you, as you ascend up, you're able to then look back down, just take you back to the section there on that, this one here. You come up the stair, you wind round, you're on the half landing, and from the half landing you can look down and speak to your friend as they're coming out. So there's a fantastic um, socializing element to this piece of spatial design. Um, and, and, you know, as I introduced, part of the same, uh, the same project by San Felice is the other stair adjacent, um, often described as a set of hawk wings in the way that it um, uh, spans out between the courtyards. So here we're looking at a view from the street, from the very narrow street of Naples through just getting a kind of um, enticing hint at some uh, big idea of this building beyond the courtyard. Um, <laughs> you know, it's seen in plan when you read these, this building in plan, it's, it doesn't seem so exciting. It's, it's, uh, it's um, you know, it's this rectilinear five flight stair. So to get to every apartment, you go up one, two, three, four, and five to get to the door of the apartment. So you can imagine the height of the, the risers of these steps are very low indeed. I think they're like eight centimeters or something. And this uh, elongates the process of arrival. Um, here you get a sense of that uh, coming round, coming round, coming up, arriving in the middle, looking over the courtyard and then going back up again. So there's, so you've arrived here, come round there and not till you get to there do you go into the... And I find something very fascinating about... Um, I have to say I only... Uh, I'd heard of San Felice for, for many years but never really... I hadn't been there until five years ago on a study trip uh, with our students, student nine, uh, unit nine. And um, I was absolutely bowled over by the skill of this person, the way he could uh, shape space and organize um, something known and familiar, uh, but um, twist it and distort it. So we're looking here at the rear facade and I was describing how in Naples uh, you have the hill, you have the narrow street, you move through the courtyard, 
you get this ex these extraordinary staircases and then onto these amazing gardens that sat behind. And here you're seeing two kinds of facades at play, one which is uh, much more uh, uh, machine-like on the courtyard with the diagonals of the flights and on the garden this much more uh, organic, um, playful um, piecing together of the diagonals and the horizontals of the landings to create this um, most peculiar and extraordinary facade. So here we are back in the courtyard looking full frontal at the facade of the uh, main staircase and just to say again this was a this was an intervention in an existing building. This was a sort of solution of circulation to make the original palazzo work as a functional entity. It was an addition. So, you know, this architect, he was doing, you know, he was doing conversions. He, 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 he seldomly did uh, a whole new building commissions. He was started his career doing, you know, little kind of stairs for the church, little uh, little pieces of furniture and festive uh, um, decorative decoration work uh, and so on. But, um, you know, then he, he gets his hands on, on this and really the functional answer uh, to making the circulation of the palazzo work is this extraordinary uh, you could say uh, it's like a, um, a uh, almost a, like a, a vertical landscape. It's like taking a palazzo and stretching it and pulling it and um, elongating it vertically up through this building. Very wide flights of stairs, as I said, very narrow, rise, uh, low rises. It's very effortless to walk up these stairs and you really have a sense that these stairs are social, social places to meet your neighbours, to hang out, the half landings, the size of rooms, um, um, the ease by which you know you just want to spend time there and hang out there in this what is like a kind of cage between the garden up the hill and the courtyard um, down the hill. So you, you're seeing the image on the right, you're kind of looking through to the void in the middle and you get this incredible um, concoction of volumes. This, uh, these painted vaults which are stretched vertically and horizontally. These vaults which, you know, kind of wanted to be or only these, these, these vaults um, should be rising just from uh, um, equal horizontal points, but here they're being stretched vertically, made to turn corners and, and wrap around themselves. And consequently you get this, this kind of extraordinary sense of, of um, play and elongation. Really there is a sense of that they're landscapes urban landscapes of places you would hang out, inhabit. Um, so we're looking out at the courtyard and then back to, uh, actually one of, was, was the door but now blanked up. Um, oh, it's a lovely detail where they would uh, put out the lantern as they arrived home at night. Yeah, just finishing with a, a, a photograph from, from our trip a few years ago with Unit 9. Um, and, and this was, a, I have to say, a very big influence. Um, another love of my life, Sophia Loren. <laughs> Two loves in one uh, scene here. Um, uh, San Felice, he so popular and so... Um, uh, well received was his first stair that you know he went on to get got commissioned to do other ones and this one is not his own development but for a client um, he had a he had a, a nickname at this time and I I can't remember the Italian um, version but it was uh, um, it, it translates as don't walk under me and b because the local people 
uh, Neapolitans are very suspicious and they had the sense that these extraordinary constructions could not possibly be safe. And you'll see some more, some more daring examples in a moment of how he would use engineering to make things stand up that shouldn't be standing up. This one is very much like the other version, except that it develops a, um, in a way, it takes a step into another typology where the staircase is a piece between courtyards. And you could imagine that this is uh, something that might repeat. So the staircase becomes this um, element that is both dividing courtyards, but also conjoining two courtyards every time within a bigger um, urban arrangement. Um, it was recently uh, renovated. I mean, it's uh, much more decorative uh, than, uh, than the other staircase, but the reason I wanted to show this, I don't love it quite as much, but it holds the same incredible rich spatial ideas. Um, but what uh, the courtyard is less uh, wide, and later in his career he um, sought to, to play out these ideas in all sorts of different dimensioned courtyards and spaces and this is one moment where he's starting to you know try try out the same idea but with a tighter dimension but in this project he also gets to um oh yeah it's uh the the um this idea of the stairs as theater is not my idea of course it's one which is uh, um plays out uh, over and over again um, through um, movies. But I wanted to show you this because uh, San Felice designed the courtyard of this, uh, this whole building, in fact. And his, um, his, his readiness for invention and um, breaking the rules, which is the, the, the kind of Baroque idea, the idea of just doing what you shouldn't do in classical architecture, smashing things together, stretching things, making fun of things um, and there's a, there is this wonderful moment in the opposite corner of the courtyard where these two windows he needs these windows in about this position in the plan when you look at the plan uh, but they come together in this you could say awkward the beautiful moment in the project um, but it was you know Bramante had a go at it too earlier on much earlier on in the way that it brings the columns together and the way that the capitals you know squeeze and pinch uh, in in the corner so in a way this idea of um, not being um, uh, let's say completely true to what um, the classical order should do is something he was not really the first to, um, to, to, to probe and push. So um, this uh, I wanted to, this is a little bit later, um, Palazzo Capuano, and it's uh, in a bit further north in the city. And um, it's, um, in, in some ways, um, it's not quite as exciting as the others, but I wanted to show you this because it has a very similar idea. It's a stair that begins uh, in the front. The courtyard is much narrower at this point, but he gets the same idea going where you're entering at one point, you're circulating up, you're bumping into your neighbor, and then you're returning into your your own individual apartment. So you see, again, you know, all credit to Dirk de Meyer's students for the preparing these drawings. Um, I think they're they're kind of almost impossible things to draw, and I know it was an incredible feat of of work to to do this. The thing I wanted to uh, point out in this is the way that the, um, the the diagonal line of the staircase bring an inevitable. Um, shaping of the facade, which you see in the way that the stairs here form the base of the hole in the facade. And he, he very cleverly, geometrically turns this into, uh, well, it's a kind of motif that plays out in the project, but he, he kind of makes sense of it in, in geometry by then repeating it equal, opposite, top, bottom. And uh, uses it in a motif manner to start to uh, decorate the inner walls 
of this uh, circulation system. So you get the sense of this thing, of this stair uh, being a, a entirely uh, coherent uh, spatial circulatory entity. Um, just going to have a sip of this. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Um, Palmaris, uh, Palazzo. This is a really fascinating one. And I have to say, when we, on our study trip, this one I loved most. You know, San Felice, uh, you know, he, 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 his commission, he gets this peculiar courtyard. You know, what do you do with this courtyard that comes and it bends into the urban block? In order to, again, you know, this is the conversion of a set of buildings. The client gets a group of buildings and he needs to get the staircase over here. It's no use here or here. It needs to, needs to be over here to do the right circulation within the body of the, the block. Um, and I think San Felice does something incredibly interesting <coughs> when you look at this um, drawing here. Um, the first thing he does on the facade at the back, he shapes, he shapes the uh, angle of the back wall of, of, of the courtyard like this into two equal facets. And then he, uh, uh, you know, proceeds to uh, develop the elevation as a series of um, even, um, symmetrical holes, you could say. But on the right-hand side of the facade, the holes are windows to apartments. On the left-hand side, they're embellished because they're physical holes, holes into the void of the staircase. Um, you know, he, he, he goes to town on the ground floor entrance and mirrors it into, this is a little common part space. Um, and I, I love the way in this very unremarkable courtyard he, he turns this rear wall, you know, this, the extent of his design work is this facade and the staircase, the construction of the staircase. Um, everything else is there, everything else is just punching holes and making the connections. So here we're seeing um, <clears throat> a view up through, what, a view up through the stair. I mean, the other thing, sorry, I just jumped on the plan too quickly. Um, what, what's very, What's very interesting, by rotating the plan at 45 degrees to the end wall, it makes the corner of the stair on the axis of the entrance. And this brings a really special dynamic to, maybe there's another, here we go. This brings a really uh, special dynamic um, between the stair as your, you know, it, it, in, in plan the stair looks quite unremarkable. But when you uh, uh, translate that into the spatial reality of rising up through the building, the staircase um, takes on this incredibly um, rich uh, uh, vista dynamic to the, to the entrance where you've just come. So when you saw the plan of this project in the first slide, you kind of think, how can you make an interesting, how can you make a connection between the stair that's the very, uh, social core of the building and the street. And this is how he does it with simple, simple um, play of geometry, planes, um, axes. Uh, Palazzo di Maggio. Now, this image is really just to locate it, but it, it's really a, this, I won't go on about this much, but the, the courtyard of this project was sliced in half by the French in the 18th century and cut the courtyard in half. But thankfully, they didn't dis disrupt and, and destroy the stair, which is entirely embedded in the middle of the uh, block of the building. Only at one moment does the stair, um, do you have a sense of the outside, uh, just happens that it it reveals itself at this point. But that's not what this project's about in my mind. It's about this, um, this extraordinary um, uh, sense of, of um, movement. I have to put another picture up to really make sense of this. This kind of pushing 
and pulling and pushing and pulling of the stair as it as it as it goes up through the building. Um, uh, um, here we go. That's that's maybe a good one. Um, where all of the half landings become entrances to a, apartments. The way the stairs position to the plan is very clever in the way that it picks up different existing adjacent buildings to make use of the levels of them. The stair becomes a solution to a problem if you want, you know, which, you know, often what we do as designers is try to deal with problems in buildings, particularly existing buildings. And a very dull way of describing the genius of this is it's a sort of answer to a problem. The stair uh, links landings, links levels, and um, uh, you know, ma makes the whole complex work. But it, it is much, much more than that, of course, much, much more. It becomes a celebratory spatial experience as you ascend from the street up through this um, incredibly baroque uh, pushing and pulling of space into the void, out, away from the void, uh, back to your front door and, and so on. Um, I'm, I'm racing through them, I realize I'm going to overrun otherwise. So, um, Mastelloni, uh, this is not uh, San Felice, but one of his, uh, it's not fair to say followers, but one of the architects around him um, at the time, it's, he's, he's contemporary, um, and they're all rising to the occasion of Grand Palazzo's being converted to apartment buildings. That's essentially what was taking, taking place um, through, through the um, social shifts that were going on in Neapolitan society at this time. Um, I'm not gonna dwell on this one, but it's, it's one I, I um, like in um, as much as the San Felice example very much the way again these two staircases doing a similar thing the two stairs start as one with the steps uh, actually placed on the courtyard so it's one thing you're going to one stair and then you know there is a kind of uh, theatrical enjoyment of, you know, you live on that side of the building or that side, you take that stair. But actually it's weird and perverse because you then you come up and then you arrive back. You come up and there's a stair behind here. Uh, it's not on this drawing. If we look at the level above, it would then be coming up above you. So it's coming above you here and it's arriving here. And then you go, you know, clearly there's a more economic way to do a stair like that. You could do a dog leg stair and that would get you up quicker and uh, do less. But what I think is interesting about all of this, um, uh, and in the work of my office, we um, make um, uh, a lot of housing projects and the stair is a really important component in that for lots of reasons, um, for its uh, sociability, uh, for the economy of, of the building, um, you know, is it better to do one big stair or two small stairs? I'm going to touch on that in, in, in a moment, but the stair, um, you know, this is a hundred years before the first elevators were made. So this was the only way of walking up and down. Today, if we have a six-story building, we'd almost certainly take the elevator up, but we might not take it down. Or if we lived on the third or fourth floor, we might walk up or certainly walk down. And so the idea of the stair as a uh, interesting, enjoyable experience is something to think about uh, more, I think, in contemporary architecture, particularly contemporary housing as we're doing it in London. Um, <clears throat> ha ha. Not San Felice. So I, I'm just going to finish um, on this um, uh, on on, on a, a few a few stairs that we're doing in projects. This is a stair within an apartment building that is six stories high. Of course, today we need elevators. Um, there are apartments on the Piano Noble uh, uh, on the sorry on the. Um, Bel Etage, which you see in this plan here, so the lifts, the elevators need to work to get you to that. But um, uh, there, there is an idea in the project 
about uh, a sequence and threshold and um, you know enjoying the moments of arrival in a building from the vestibule, uh, from the post boxes. Uh, if you're taking the lift and not bothering to walk, you do that straight away. But you know, if you're on the second floor or first floor, you might just pop up. And projects like this are very hard won in uh, London housing projects because because um, every square meter counts and trying to, uh, for instance, make a void. You know, I, when we were doing this, I was really I was thinking about San Felice and how on earth did he get away with building two stairs to come back to one point? You know, it's not the most economic. But what it is, is it's a very enjoyable. It celebrates the <laughs> process of arriving home. And um, we should, uh, it's better to use the stair and not the lift. Uh, it's better for lots of reasons. Um, and we, in some of our projects, have managed to sort of sell this idea to clients that, you know, it's more green, it's more healthy, uh, blah, blah. All those kind of arguments that, you know, we, we know are important. So this is, uh, this played out in a project that we've been working on in, in Harrow in North London, where these buildings then repeat. And the stairs, one of the arguments to, to make this, to get this project to happen, was that it's one piece of design that repeats, I can't remember, 15 times throughout the project. Um, so this, this kind of stair preoccupation of ours is playing out in some other projects. And this is a, a different um, project in South London in Southwark. Um, and, you know, I cannot tell you the arguments we would have with the client about how wide we can make the void uh, between the flights. And the void's important, it's good because you're walking up, you see someone, you have a sense of connection, of community, belonging between yourself and your neighbors. Um, there are two of these stairs, in fact, that sit within two buildings with a courtyard in the middle. Um, they're nine-story buildings where the staircase is on the front of the building. I mean, that's the other thing to say that um, it's, uh, there's enormous resistance to putting a stair on the facade of the building because the facade is the valuable, you know, edges in which you would make apartments and apartments, you know, sell and makes the projects more profitable. Um, so, uh, I, every time we're making projects like this, I keep thinking about San Felice and how he managed to get away with, well, we know how he got away with it, he was his own developer on two, but how he was able to, you know, at that, part, at that point, they didn't have elevators. Um, so the experience of using the stair uh, for aristocratic society who were living in smaller apartments, it mattered that the the, the idea of reception really throughout Central Europe at this time was important, the sense of entrance, arrival, and he, he San Felice does it with a staircase. And I think that still matters today, this idea of um, arrival and, you know, how, uh, you know, how the staircase is thrust to the front of the building and from the, ar from the arcade in through to the lift lobbies and then up through the building to the residential front doors and arriving at the top of the building, it arrives at the top on this. I'll just flip back to that. These, these little roof gardens. Uh, so there are communal roof gardens which only happen because of COVID. Just at the moment, everybody said, now we need, we need green spaces in the city for residents who can't leave the blocks. And it was a little strange thing that, you know, because of that, the client would buy into the idea of spending a bit more money and making the rooftops um, resident spaces and the stair, the journey of the stair up to the roof, as you see in this um, kind of little Amsterdam school moment as it arrives this little figure. Uh, and finally, um, it's another uh, project, single project where two stairs feed two halves 
of the project, which is two U-shaped apartment buildings linked with a covered uh, passageway and courtyards, or three courtyards, but these two stairs. And everything about a project like this is about super economical doing things, trying to build it for uh, a kind of construction cost that is lower than it really can be. So trying to um, argue that the stairs are going to be an important part of the project for, for uh, you know, reasons of health and well-being, it's popular, and, um, and the environment, because we won't use the lift as much. Um, we, we found became an argument to, to, to win with them. So, uh, oops, there's one last one. So this is um, two stairs in a set of buildings we're doing with Simon Henley, in case anyone's here from Simon's office. Uh, and it's a series of U-shaped buildings. There's four of these type of buildings, and they each have these um, overly generous... We never said overly generous, but these uh, sort of overly generous staircases that, are, that should be a pleasure to walk up, or certainly down. And here's one of the moments where the stair rides down in the ground floor, floor lobbies. And I think we're done. <laughs>